I'm Professor Andy West and I work at Leeds College of Music where I'm the head of postgraduate studies. I've been in that role for the past four years and basically that involves me working with a lot of really talented musicians from around the world. Sometimes they can be classical pianists, sometimes uh, jazz guitarists, other times rappers, songwriters. Uh, and all those students work together and collaborate on projects and figure out how each other work. I've also been a songwriter for um, 26, 27 years now, so quite a long time. Uh, and I started in 1990 when I was asked to join a band with a guy called Hugh Cornwell uh, from The Stranglers, who was a fan of my first band. Uh, so I joined a band with him and Roger Cook, uh, called Cornwall Cook and West. And I started writing songs with Roger Cook as part of that project, which is a really lucky break for me because he's a, a fabulous songwriter. Um, so he was a very experienced writer and I think that was really key in getting me involved in songwriting in the first place was that I had the good luck to, to work with somebody who was that good in the first place. So um, we ended up writing about 30 or so songs together and um, then I started working for a company called Carlin which is library music a company based in London and they would ask me to write variations on popular hit songs at the time. Some of that stuff that you hear on television that sounds annoyingly like another artist or band. Uh, it was that kind of thing I was doing. Um, I then moved to Nashville in 1997 and uh, wrote songs for Warner Chapel Music there, which was essentially I was doing two things there. I was writing songs for myself as an artist and also writing on behalf of other artists for Warner Chapel. And I came back here to the UK in 2003 with my wife and was asked to design what at the time was the world's first master's degree in songwriting. Uh, for Bath Spa University. So I did that and I ran that for four years and then I came up to Leeds to start work here as a popular music lecturer at first and then head of postgraduate studies. At the age of 15 uh, I picked up a guitar and started playing that and just could play it very quickly. I was very very interested in figuring out what to do with the chords and how to play songs that I knew and that I loved and how to sing them at the same time. So I got into that very, very quickly and, and um, somebody lent me a, a, a Beatles songbook with all their songs in it. Eventually what I got from that, from getting immersed in the Beatles music, which I loved anyway, and it just instinctively, being able to play and sing it gave me a kind of a psychological freedom with regard to making music. And I felt from that time, around about the age of 16 onwards, very, very comfortable just singing, playing, having ideas, throwing ideas out, and being able to hopefully recognize fairly quickly the good ideas from the bad ideas, which is really what songwriting is all about. It's about editing as much as creating. If you're in an educational environment, then that's what gets accelerated, is being surrounded by people who can say to you, why did you write that? What about that melody do you think works? Um, is that a theme for a song that should be written by you? Um, what instruments do you think you can hear on it? Should we try them? Does this work? Does that work? And that constant kind of critical questioning that happens when you're developing as a songwriter in the educational system happens very, very slowly when you're outside that. So for me, not having any formal musical training or education, it was just a case of picking it up bit by bit in this kind of mosaic fashion that happens when you're, you're doing it professionally and it's, it, it's what you do with your life. I think if you really love what you're doing and you put everything into it and it, it relates to your personality and you're not trying to be somebody else as a songwriter, then I think people hear that and the more you do it and the more you play and the more you write and the more musicians you work with, uh, the more that kind of reinforces your, in, in terms of your sense of self, that that's the right thing to be doing. Um, I wouldn't say there's a huge amount of job security in songwriting, um, on one hand. 
but it really depends how you go about setting yourself up to be a songwriter professionally. So the more aware you are of your strengths and weaknesses, the better a position you're in. Uh, for instance, a lot of people I know who work in this part of the world as songwriters write for other artists. So they'll find an up-and-coming artist, somebody who has a lot of potential, maybe have signed a record deal with somebody, and they'll get in early on and start writing songs with that person. And when that starts to work, then the songwriter finds themselves in a similar position to the artist because they become kind of an invaluable part of what the artist is doing. At that point, you can negotiate a publishing deal with somebody. Um, and that's often not the record label who signs the artist. It's often a different company altogether. And those people uh, will basically see you as part of what makes that artist tick. And if, if it's really obvious that your songwriting is a big part of an artist's success, then the publishing deal gets better. You can normally negotiate a contract with a publisher that suits both you and them. So um, it's always in everybody's interest to write up contracts and sign contracts that are realistic. So you might accept a salary which is maybe lower if you're at the if if you haven't if there hasn't been a lot of income from the songs as yet. If you write with somebody, with another artist, or, or for yourself as an artist, and you're making a lot of money, then you would sign for more money. So it really works on that scale. If the artist becomes successful and you're songwriting on their behalf, then you can negotiate yourself a higher salary on that basis. Um, so there isn't, there isn't job security. It's kind of, it's similar in many ways to a lot of other industries. It really depends on how much income has come back in as a result of you doing what you do. So you you take your role in, in, in what's happening and then you get paid as a consequence of how successful you are within that particular role. I think freelance basis is more common um, but it can work either ways. For myself, uh, I work both freelance and on salaries, and it really depends upon what it is that you're doing at the time that's, that's appropriate for the project that you're working on. The, pro the, uh, the film music I wrote was done on a freelance basis. Um, and then uh, you also get paid uh, some money from PRS as well when those things are used on film and television. So it's one of these situations where, uh, as a songwriter, you're not necessarily being paid, and then that's the end of it. In fact, the opposite is always the case. It's uh, a job in which you can be paid a certain amount up front, perhaps, and then you can be paid royalties from performance rights, from sales, mechanicals, and the income sources are you know, once the songs start getting used on the radio and on film and television, then the income sources are, are multiple. So they're coming from a lot of different countries, a lot of different territories. Um, and you can sometimes be really surprised by the life of the song. That's a very mobile profession. So uh, you wouldn't tend to work in an office, for instance, and people come to you unless you had a bespoke kind of setup, and that's the way everybody else liked to work with you. So, uh, if you're based in Leeds, then you would probably know people in Manchester, in London, um, usually other big cities, and you would network with them, and you would either write in their studios, or they would come and write in your studio. So, there's movement in that sense within this country. A lot of writers I know work with other writers in Los Angeles, or Nashville, or New York. Um, and those are kind of the big songwriting hubs, if you like, internationally, where there are lots of songwriters and lots of publishers and record labels and artists. So uh, people tend to move back and forth between those specific cities more than others, and it really depends which project you're working on. And I think another important aspect of it is the networking side of things. 
which is in songwriting. It's basically trying to do as many things as you can for people or groups of people who don't have songwriting as their strength. So there are lots of people who, for whatever reason, can't really write or finish songs. Um, if you can identify those people and say, you know, I've got something that I can do here that can be of use to you. And then the more you do that with the more of those people, then the more you network. And it really is about that. You can't really go around as a songwriter and ask for money uh, for things. Uh, has to be signed by publishers. Um, you know, there are way, way too many musicians and songwriters in the world for that to be a realistic way to approach um, operating as a professional songwriter. It's really all about you making yourself available for other people's projects, collaborating with them, and then those projects starting to work and generate money. And by that means, then you can really um, eventually generate some momentum. As a songwriter, you would work with potentially a number of collaborators, unless you were totally self-contained, which is, as I said before, is kind of unusual. Um, you would have a, a publisher. That person's job would be to support you as much as possible financially and in terms of their advice on, um, on how you create your work and what your goals are as a songwriter, basically. So um, you would typically write songs, take them to the publisher, and they'll kind of be that critical co-investigator with you, if you like. That's that, th those are the best kinds of publishers. They will try and make the songs so that you still feel like you own them and they're yours and that they haven't been messed about with too much, but the other people, including artists, producers, and audiences, will be able to have the same kind of access to the songs as you do. So they're basically people who, who think really coherently about audiences and how your work can be made accessible to audiences. Aside from that, um, there are managers for songwriters as well who will set songwriters up with artists and uh, that's a role which is always taken by people who are right at the very, very heart of, of any music industry, people who know everybody, there are no lawyers, uh, there are no producers, there are no artists, there are no publishers, there are other songwriters. And these people are kind of facilitators, if you like. So as a songwriter, if you have one of those people to work with, then that's incredibly helpful because you can potentially then be linked up with other people who are already involved in the mechanism of the industry, if you like. And as a consequence, it really helps to be as adaptable as possible, by which I mean just a nice person. Um, that is hugely important within every songwriting culture that I've ever been involved in, because it's such a collaborative industry. Um, the people who are difficult and, and, and cause problems generally are not invited back to things and not welcome again. Um, same goes for people who turn up late, strangely. It's, um, punctuality is a big deal. Purely because if you're in a situation uh, as a songwriter where, say, you're in a recording session, there's going to be about a dozen people involved, at least, and um, it's going to cost a lot of money to pay all those people while you turn up half an hour late uh, for their time and expertise. So it's very, very punctual very, very collaborative, and the spirit of everything in songwriting you tend to find is that everybody's moving in the same direction, everybody's doing whatever they can to make the music sound as good as it possibly can. I would say the main challenge is to do with the cultural environment in which you find yourself and trying to keep up with things. And, and, be confident that you understand the world within which you write songs. Because especially in this country, it's such a fast moving uh, cultural environment that things change so quickly. You could blink and then all of a sudden you look up and it's, it's completely different to the way it was before. So as a songwriter, I think you've got to listen a lot. You've got to be very, very aware of people's moods, where they're headed, what they want to hear, the things they're interested in. That's a very difficult 
skill to acquire. Um, in other countries, less so. Certainly in the UK, that's a big deal. I think in America, the culture is much, much slower moving and things are much more traditional. So you could almost rely upon a certain kind of song formula working or a certain uh, type of idea you could say uh, from the outset whether it was going to work or not with much more confidence than you can in this country. And then in other countries, as I say, it changes. Germany, again, is very a very stable kind of music environment, I think, relatively. Um, and you could go over there and put your mind to writing a hit in Germany and you would know what the parameters were that would be more likely to work than others. In this country, much, much harder. Um, just as I say, because of the the evolution of trends in this country is, is so much faster. So I think that would be the main challenge. I would say the main perk of being a songwriter for me personally is that you get to have a musical kind of record of your life, if you like. Uh, so uh, you can look back and do all the people you've worked with and all the things you've been thinking about and you feel passionately about and that you've wanted to sing about. They're all there recorded, so it's just really super nice to be able to look back on those songs and, and have those as a kind of a, almost like a musical photo album of your, of your experiences during your life. You can express what it is you want to say um, through the voice and through music, which is a great thing to be able to do. It's just a nice feeling. And also in the people who work professionally in the industry are uh, just by and large super nice. Um, I've really, really rarely met any students or, or, or professional musicians who I didn't just think were great people. Um, it just seems to attract nice characters, open-minded people, creative people, um, people who, who really want to make something that's the best that they can possibly make it. And you, you get to join in that, you get to, you get to be a part of these kind of uh, collaborations and networks of people. And uh, it's just a really nice aspect of your life, I think. Firstly, to just be as nice as you can to everybody you work with. Try and offer your services to people as a songwriter and help the projects that are involved in get better, thereby kind of increase your own value within those collaborative projects. Always be true to yourself in what you write and make sure that what you're writing about comes from your own experience in some way or other. Um, and that it involves where you come from, because I think the authenticity that, that is involved in expressing what you believe to be the case and saying things the way you see them is a really, really key part of what enables audiences to identify songwriters as being uh, specifically interesting individuals. I think in terms of leads, it's in a really exciting position because um, it's kind of a, it's got a rich musical history. Um, there are a phenomenal number of great players here. I think who primarily are involved in smaller projects. I think in Leeds, there's definitely space for a certain sound to emerge and that, that will almost certainly come from musicians collaborating together and making sure that the world knows about the way this part of the world sounds. Uh, you have other cities like Bristol and Manchester and Liverpool who I think have this kind of aesthetic that's attached to those places. But then the danger of that is that it becomes of a certain time, I think for sure. Thank you.